Hi everybody, I'm BJ. I'm the genealogy librarian at the Maine State Library. And today I'm gonna to talk a little about War of 1812 records. This is actually one of those wars that doesn't get talked about that much, but there are some pretty good records. And one reason it's worth looking to see if one of your ancestors was involved is that between the service records and the pension records for the men who served, you're getting names and dates and places in the records that may not be anywhere else because of, especially here in Northern New England, you know, they weren't keeping vital records at this point. It's even before Massachusetts started routinely you know, requiring vital records. A lot of towns kept them, but it wasn't required. And so there are also a lot of towns that didn't. So, Having said that, the first thing I'm actually gonna talk about was done for military reasons, but it's not actually a military record. It's this nice little book called British Aliens in the United, in the United States during the War of 1812. And it's pretty simple in what it has. Um, it's arranged by state. And it tells you the name of the head of the household, that person's age, how long they've been in the US, and sometimes other details about, say, their occupation. There's one here, you know, it says no family, another one where it actually gives the person's height. Um, and so on. So while they're pretty minimal, again, it's, it's a clue if you've got somebody in here, for example, um, it's 18, 12, or 13, and so it gives you another data point to go with the 1810 census. So for example, one of my ancestors is actually listed here as, um, his name was Restio, he's listed here as Risto, age 36, Taylor, Boston, wife Catherine, born abroad, age 34, children, Louisa, William, Catherine, Matilda, Robert, Elsie, Charlotte, all born in the US with their ages. And then two other people in the house, Jonathan Bradley Bellows and Nathaniel Leng, or Long, um, as of July 18th, 1812. So that gives you, you know, names to go with what was in the 1810 census. And not all of them are that detailed, but it is a helpful thing to have. And, you know, and this was done so they'd know, you know, they were trying to find people who were sympathetic to the um, British side of the war. So even though this isn't a military record, it was done for a military purpose. So I figured it was worth letting you know it existed, right? So let's talk about straight military records. And I'm gonna start out by saying, I am not a military records specialist. Um, give me church records, you know, court records. Those I really work with a lot. Um, military records, I know enough to sort of work my way around and um, often get myself in trouble. Um, but it's not something I specialize in. So, but it's, I, as I said, I know enough that I'm going to sort of lay out what's available for you. One of the things that happened in the War of 1812 is you actually have both U.S. federal troops and state supervised troops. And so one of the things that you'll have to figure out is did your ancestors or relatives serve in a federal army or in the state militias because the records are going to be kept differently. So let's take a look. I'm going to share my screen. And 
and let's go here. So here's, this is at Family Search, and this is the enlistment register. So I'm going to put a name in, and I'm going to, and you'll see that this is actually going. Oh, question about the book content. I don't know if it's online. Um, it probably is somewhere. I just, I haven't used it. I, um, I will take a look and see. Um, so here we have the US, and you'll see this is from 1798 to 1914. So basically this is everything post-revolution, pre-World War I. So if I wanna limit this to 1812 to 1814, and hit search, Oop, and I need to sign in. And here we have various people who have um, served. And as you can see, let's try this one. And here we have the enlistments. Are you seeing the, the actual record here? Okay, I just wanted to make sure it didn't pop up to something else for you. So here you have um, the person's name, um, which regiment they signed up for, who was the commander, Ah, yes, thank you, Steve. It is at, online at Ancestry, um, the book I showed you. Um, so here we have, you know, and what you'll find is on a lot of these records, you're as likely to find things listed by the company commander than by a regiment number. So it's worth taking that information down. You have the height, eyes, hair, complexion, age, occupation, what town they live in, the state, when they signed up and where, who signed them up, the duration, so this guy signed up for the duration of the war and then remarks about their service. So this is the main um, record for the enlistments in the Federal Army. Um, and so you can see there's some reasonably detailed information there. Um, you'll find that people did tend to sign up with friends and so on. These are in alphabetical order, so some of that may get, um, may not be obvious. You may want to look through who else signed up at a similar time at that place. So that's one type of, rep. so these are the army enlistments, and as I said, you can um, deal with limiting, because this database covers such a wide period, you may want to limit it to the war, just the war you're looking at. Oops. Um, but this is, this is at Family Search. There are similar records at Ancestry. I'm showing this to you because this is the free version. Um, so that's there. You can also, if you're not finding somebody in the index, you can click down here and then browse um, 
which is just not, you can like, go back here and see the volumes and it is, um, does tell you, you do it by, um, here, let me make this bigger so you can see it. So for 1812, for Putnam, for example, you would click here for the War of 1812. Um, and then if you click here, you just, you go into the book and you get what I was showing you with the, the enlistment data. Okay. That's a good place to start for people who are, for men who enlisted at the federal level. So let's take a look here. Let's hang on. Where are we? Oh, and if we go to Maine, in the War of 1812, remember, we need, then need to actually look at Massachusetts. Um, so, you would actually go to the Massachusetts one. Um, but notice they've linked some of it from here on the main page. Um, one of the things to notice is that you do have, um, I've talked about pension files in another presentation, but it is worth checking to see if somebody had a pension file because if they did here you go and look at this is one person's file that is 50 some pages long and because records weren't necessarily kept that well you're going to sometimes find information in the pension file about their service. They may have included some of their service papers, for example, in this file. So let's take a look here. You will see that they've compiled things. Here's an overall index card, which shows you they've really compiled stuff together. Um, and so sometimes you will see references to compiled records, which are when they did go through and organize things. And so here you have the information about um, the widow, um, the soldier, if, especially if they've died. Um, it shows where the widow is, where they're getting the pension from. You can see that this is this is much later, um, but you'll notice that gave her maiden name back here. It says maiden name of the widow, Esther Wright. And when you're dealing with um, having been married in um, the 18, early 1800s, there may not be another record that tells you what her maiden name was. And so even more than some other wars, you're going to want to flip back and forth between the, um, the pension records and the, the, their enlistment records, other records of their service. And you can see here, You've got things about when he died. Here's the information about when he served, about her, why she needs the, the pension. Um, and as you can see, they 
you know, they did, they microfilmed everything that was in the file. So if there's a blank piece of paper, it's there. Um, so that's that's worth knowing about. Um, the Newberry Library, if this goes through the way it did, has an excellent, um, and I'm gonna put this in the chat, if I can get the chat to come up. For those of you who are interested in more detail, they've got a, a very nice bibliography here. Um, about the War of 1812. So um, that's a, I was gonna do my own and I'm like, you know, wait a minute, this is, this is good enough that I'm just gonna link, send you guys the link to this. Um, so this is the Newberry Library in Chicago and their guide to um, War of 1812 records. Um, So, okay, we looked at that and that. Here's what I was looking for. So as you can see, you have the federal units in the Army and then the Navy and Marines. Here's a map of the US. Just so you can see, let me blow this up. As you can see, the northern part of Maine was still being disputed with Canada slash the UK. Louisiana was a state, but Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida weren't. Um, Mississippi was already a US territory, but Florida was still under Spanish control. Um, so, this just gives you an idea of why you had you know, battles here in Louisiana is there's this disputed territory because the different places here all wanted the ports along the, Flor the Florida coast. And as you can see, Massach Maine is still part of Massachusetts. And so it was called the District of Maine and it was by this point, you'll find it's interesting that there are some records where they're really set aside from Massachusetts and others where they're fully integrated. And that may influence where the records are. Um, so again, you have military districts. Maine was part of District 1. And I showed you about Maine, which you really want to look at Massachusetts for. Um, and again, they've got the service records at Ancestry and the enlistments at Family Search. So let's take a look here. And let me show you a Massachusetts one. And here they don't have a lot of the images, but again, it's giving you, you'll see here it's Longley's Regiment, not the name of, not like the 10th Battalion or the whatever. It's the name of the commander and it's the Massachusetts militia. So this would tell you that you're looking at a state record, not the federal um, army records. And it would give you a hint where to, you know, you're looking for a regiment that's commanded by somebody named Longley. Um, and for example, here's someone else in the militia who started out as a musician and ended as a corporal. 
And again, now this one, you get the sixth regiment Merrill's. So you get both a regiment number and a commander. But it's still in the Massachusetts provided militia, not in the federal army. Does this make sense to everybody how you're getting these two sort of concurrent systems and how it can make finding the records a little difficult? Okay, so let's show you, um, if we go to fold three, which is owned by Ancestry and is where they've put a lot of their military records, you can look under War of 1812, and again, let me increase the size on this so you can see it. And they have a fair number of records. You can do a free trial. Um, if you only have a couple people to look for. Um, and they have got here all under the War of 1812, the Military records, the bounty record, the, the, the pension and bounty land records, the Canadian forces, and down here at the bottom, you get the UK forces as well. They have gone and, and digitized the, the data for um, those fighting on the UK side of this. Um, and notice here you've got bounty land warrant index there. And then down here you have War of 1812 military bounty land warrants. So you may want to um, make sure you've looked through the whole list. So let's take a look at the service records um, and you'll notice here you've got an index you have and you have some native americans so we're, we want the the war this and you'll see again they've divided it down by native group or by state so notice no maine because you know, it's still part of massachusetts and then they since we're just browsing, let's click on P. And let's pick somebody interesting. So here's a chaplain and you get one page. And this is again, the, the cards that go with the compiled records. Um, there may, and when you only get one page, it may be a sign that they just haven't gotten to it yet. So here's a musician. Let's go back. Let's go back and try like at the beginning of the alphabet and see if. Oh, still one page there. So they're in the middle of still doing these. Um, so let's take a look at what a Native American one looks like. And again, it, it looks pretty similar, um, but it notes this is a good you know, way to see if somebody's identifying as Native American at this point. And let me blow this up. Where's the, there we go. So you can see you have, this is his name. He was in Major Blue's detachment of Chickasaw Indians. And he was a private. Um, but at least it gives you ways to then go look for details about that detachment and see if there are more records. So let's take a look. 
Let's work our way back. One more. Um, and again, you have, um, where is it? All sorts of interesting things here, you know, letters received by the adjutant general and you can go in and click a year and the surname and letters about that person. Um, so this person is in this letter is saying they accept the appointment as a second lieutenant. Um, but it gives you, you know, there's a date, there's a place this person was. And so it gives you, um, And he's saying he's going to stay at his place of residence until he receives further orders. So there's a good chance you want to look for his family in Westfield, Massachusetts at this point. Does that make sense to everybody why you might want to look at these letters to see if one of your ancestors is there? Um, so let's back up again. And you can just search up here. But I often find um, that it's easier to um, skim fold three by going through this way. And as you can see, these are, um, let me blow it up again so we can all see it. So here's, lists of the general staff by military district. So here's for Massachusetts, New Hampshire and, uh, and Maine. As you can see, you have the names of the people um, who served in the various high up staff positions. And when they were commissioned, which if you're looking for one of these people is a helpful date to have. Because as you can see, some of them were actually well before the war. Um, and then others, this second line, this Peter Schuyler is during the war. So it gives you an idea that these two may be closer to what we consider career military because they, you know, he already, Joseph Goodhue had already been a surgeon's mate well before the war. So let's, as you can see, there are a lot of pages to this and you do get down to um, let me blow this up. Um, other, you know, the, the lieutenants and ensigns and so on in other units, um, you know, and, and who's the quartermaster and things like that. So, and, you know, this is not a record where you're going to have trouble with handwriting because it's printed. So this is the one that for 1813 that really covers the bulk of the war. So let's go back. And just for kicks, let's take a look at
now for the UK, you'll see there by piece number. And you can actually go search the um, National Archives at Q websites um, to find the piece number somebody is in. Um, so let's see what we get here. And again, so if your ancestor fought for the British side, this looks like it's a nice, you know, it's a nice nine page long um, file that gives you a fair bit of information about where they were born. Um, this particular person was actually born in a, on a Mediterranean island, it looks like. Um, and so on. Um, so he, he served for 24 years and 19 days and was discharged for a disability. And so you'd probably also find um, further records about that. Uh, so, and again, the Canadian, they have the, um, the service registers and the widow's pensions. So if you have ancestors who were loyalist and went to Canada, you might find records of their, the sons or the daughters-in-law applying for a pension from the Canadian government. So let me check my notes before we go any further. You'll also see there are some Navy records here. And again, it's, it's um, for quite long periods of time. So you'll, you'll need to narrow things down a bit, but they are here. Um, because there was naval, um, a naval component to the war. So, as I said, I've talked about bounty lands and pensions in a different program, but this is, my experience, limited as it is, is more than any of the other wars that I've worked with records on, for the War of 1812, I, I do end up going back and forth. A lot of the information actually about a man's military service ends up in the pension file when he or a widow applies for a pension. And because of that, both the federal and the you know, federal army state militia, you get cases where they really need to prove that they served to get the pension. So at this point, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and turn the camera back on. And anybody have questions at this point? No questions. All right, in that case, I'm gonna stop recording.